Hey eBayers, it's Suzanne A. Wells back with another video and I wanted to make this video because I see a lot of you out there struggling with perfecting your eBay photos and taking a lot of time to make them perfect and this this really isn't necessary. Um, there are some best practices that eBay recommends and what I'm going to go over in this video is their downloadable PDF guide with their best practices for taking photos. I have a link to that under the video if you want to download it. However, knowing that a lot of you listen and um, are multitasking when you are listening and watching to YouTube, I thought it a good idea to go over these tips. Number one, to put your mind at ease about what's really important and number two to help you save time because eBay is all about time and when you are struggling with things that really aren't that important in the overall scheme you're wasting time so I just want to put this out there to help you speed things along and you know two main things before we jump in number one is just use common sense um, it, it doesn't have to be perfect it's eBay hopefully your listings not going to be up there for very long and the objective is to show the buyer exactly what you're selling and especially for new people seem to get caught up in just being very fearful of doing anything wrong and you're not going to break any eBay policies um, unless you're copying photos off the internet that you did not take. That's the only thing you cannot do on eBay. Um, but, you know, learning eBay is, it can be overwhelming because you're learning what to sell. You're learning how to ship, what supplies you need. You're learning the whole process of the eBay website. And then you throw in taking pictures on top of that. And it's a lot to learn. So, the, the next thing is just don't overthink this. Um, you know, don't get all caught up in everything that everyone is saying all over the internet about how to take pictures and all this stuff you have to have and the, you know, the light kits and the, the cube photography thing and the umbrellas and, you know, all this special stuff you need because you really don't need all of that. Um, I've been taking pictures with my iPhone ever since I've had one, which I was even late getting on the bandwagon for that. I don't think I got one till 2012. Before that, I used my digital camera and took the little memory card out and stuck it in my computer to transfer my pictures. I have never had a light kit. Um, I've just never had to, I never needed any of that stuff because when I started, it wasn't available and I just, I use a, a blank wall and my iPhone and natural lighting and that's all I need. So um, I'm not going to get into all the trappings of, you know, eBay, all the things you have to buy because there's, there's really, you don't need all that. But you don't need an expensive camera. You don't need, you know, hours of editing. You don't need all these things that take out the backgrounds. You just need, use common sense take a good picture where the customer can see what you're selling, set up an area to take your photos, and just do it and just get it done. So let's go over what eBay says are best practices for taking pictures because I always go back to what eBay tells us to do and do things the right way. So in this guide, they say, take better pictures, sell more stuff. Yes, that is true. The more clear, crisp quality pictures you so show, the easier it is for buyers to find your listings and make purchase decisions. Check out these tips and tricks for taking better pictures and then take a lot of them. Choose the best, upload to eBay picture hosting and turn more pictures into more sales. So that's really all you need to think about. This statement again, the easier it is for buyers to find your listings and make purchase decisions, the more you're going to sell. So number one, 
very important, use a plain, uncluttered backdrop to draw attention to your item. Um, eBay says to use a neutral backdrop to keep the focus on the item. As eBay has evolved over the years, you'll see people getting really artsy and creative with their backgrounds and, uh, you know, taking things outside and having all these items you know in the background to make it more interesting but you really don't want to do that you you want to be like a catalog think about um, those that are old enough to know JC Penney catalog Sears catalog LL Bean catalog and usually the item is being modeled by a person and it's just a plain background or a very subtle background so that's what you want because also remember that people are looking at this on mobile devices and the screen is smaller so you don't want anything cluttering up that picture you want the focus to be completely on the item you're selling next eBay says number two turn off the flash and use diffuse lighting to prevent shadows and reflections diffuse lighting just means whatever lighting you're using you don't have to buy all of these way, you know, these things to, you know, do the umbrellas with the the shadowing and the to per, the glare and um, you know all that kind of stuff. You can create your own light box. There's lots of ways to do that. Just search on YouTube for how to make a light box for photography. Um, what I do is I always have my mannequin or my staging area near a window so it's natural light. Um, you can figure it out without having to buy all this stuff. Now I will say if your eBay area is in like a dark basement you probably will need some help with lighting but f for the average person which is what my eBay channel is about the average person you can usually find a place in your house somewhere near a window or you know um, with good lighting to be your eBay photo area okay number three and this one I don't do um, they say to use a tripod to prevent softness and blur it just helps keep the camera steady um, I've never had an issue with this. My pictures just aren't blurry. I, I guess um, it's just not an issue for me. But if you do have blurry pictures, that may be what's going on. So you may want to look into a tripod to secure your camera so that your pictures come out better. Just, just a thought, but definitely not a necessity. Number four, capture high resolution pictures. This has to do with the setting um, on your camera most iPhones are already set to where this is perfect for eBay you don't have to adjust anything but if you are using a camera or an older phone you may have to figure this out on your phone how to change this setting and you can just Google that um, how to change resolution on whatever model your camera or phone is and you can figure that out by Googling it Number five, this is very important for mobile shoppers. Fill the frame with the item. The picture should go edge to edge. eBay says, make it easy for buyers to see every detail by filling the frame with the item. Center the item so that the entire item is in the photo and it takes up to 80 to 90% of the frame. And it says, if you are selling a new item, make sure you don't break any seals or remove any tags from the item. Original packaging helps assure buyers that your item is new. So you want to take the picture of your item that you're selling. And this is important for mobile because, again, that screen is small. So you want, you don't want to have the buyer to have to zoom in to see anything. You don't want them to have to do any work. You want that picture to come up exactly fitting the screen of the device um, and one comment about when they say if you're selling a new item um, show pictures of the price tags now I sell a lot of clothing sometimes I find it new with tags and it's got markdowns on it I show the tag um, of the item you know the price tag even with the markdowns and what I say in my listing is 
new with original $99 price tag because they can obviously see it's been marked down and it doesn't mean the buyer won't pay more than the markdown price on the tag you're just showing them the original price of the item which helps the buyer see it's more valuable so let's say it was a hundred dollar item and it's you got it at TJ Maxx and it's been max and it's been um, marked down four or five times and it's you know twenty dollars with fifty percent off that it doesn't matter if it's what the buyer is looking for if it's exactly what they need they're gonna pay your price regardless of what's on that tag and I know this from experience um, I sell things like this all the time especially like Chico's I'll find with the tag and there'll be many markdowns on there and I'll just say Chico size 3 set, uh, sweater original price $99 I'll put 40 on it the markdowns will be like to 20 and I'll still get my price because people who wear that brand know the quality they know the original price and they don't mind paying for exactly what they want okay number six capture all angles details and blemishes take lots of detailed close-up pictures from different angles capture images images I'm tongue-tied today sorry about that of the top bottom and sides of your item if your item has flaws include photos that show them clearly you can always include important details about your item in the item description area of your listing if needed clean your item that's important um, now another word about selling clothing um, I do five pictures of most of my clothing items and most of its women's clothing on a mannequin so I will do a a shot of the front, a close-up of the neckline, a shot of the back, a photo of the brand and size tag so like if it's Ann Taylor size 10, Banana Republic size 12, whatever it says on that brand and size tag that's usually in the neck and then the last photo is of the content tag which is often found in the side seam or behind the neck tag that says what it's made of rayon cotton silk cashmere and that picture is great for several reasons number one it reinforces to the buyer what the item is made of so you've got it in your description as well as in the item specifics those little boxes you check but you've also got a picture of it so if there's any discrepancy about the fabric what it's made of they can't argue um, also it helps when you sit down to do your listing instead of having to look for the tag again you know look for the tag and figure out what the things made of you've got a picture of it right there that you can look at and you just copy what's in that picture um, obviously can't copy and paste but you can just look at the picture on your screen instead of having to fumble around with the item so it makes listing a little faster um, but for three-dimensional items you definitely want a picture of all sides and um, you know I see so many listings that only have one or two pictures and just think of it as if you were the buyer you want to know what the thing looks like on all sides before you buy it you're trying to get money from people and you've got to be completely forthcoming with all the information and show them what they're buying and I think this is a big reason things go unsold on eBay we do a lot of store critiques for sellers and this is one of the big problems we see is they may only have one or two pictures and it's just that they don't realize that you need to look at it from the buyers point of view and you need to show them um, we all know that buyers don't read I don't know why but they don't <laughs> so that's very frustrating so you've got to show them the only thing between you and your buyer is this screen computer screen or a phone screen so do the talking with your pictures and show all sides of the item including the defects okay show the scale of the item if the size of your item isn't clear place a coin or ruler next to the item to indicate its size 
you've got to use something standard in size so that your buyer will understand what the size scale is. So that's why they say a coin or a ruler because those are standard size items. Um, if you put a little rock next to it, they're not going to know how big the rock is. So you've got to use something that people can relate to that is a standard size item. So you'll see this a lot with jewelry or um, stamps or little small things um, showing the scale of the item. Number eight, keep your photos from tinting. Different kinds of light give photos different colors. Incandescent bulbs give photos a yellow tint. Fluorescent bulbs make them appear blue. Typically digital cameras have a setting called auto white balance that compensates for these differences creating a neutral or daylight photo. If your photos consistently turn out blue or yellow try adjusting the white balance setting to remove the unwanted color cast. So you can see here these two pictures one is definitely more true to color than the other so this is something you may have to work on but the best way to deal with editing photos is to not have to edit them. I'm going to do a video on that but try to get everything right when you're taking the photo because that's going to save you time when it's time to list you won't have all these extra steps for editing. Okay number nine capture detailed close-up shots use the macro code or setting on your camera for close-ups a tripod and shutter release come in handy here because the slightest motion during the exposure will cause motion blur. So, you know, if that's an issue for you, you can definitely, um, you know, use a tripod. But like I said, I've never had a problem with that. Okay, number 10, avoid using props. Very important because you don't want the buyer to assume they're getting something they're not. While clothing and accessories are more attractive when modeled on body, props should never be used if they obscure the product or prevent the item from filling the majority of the frame. Props may confuse buyers about exactly what's included in your listing. I see this all the time. Uh, people are trying to make their pictures look like something, um, you know, in a store or a boutique and they'll put extra jewelry on the mannequin or, you know, like this has an extra handbag or they'll have, um, you know, all these extra things in the picture to try to enhance it. But if if the buyer like buys this dress and they don't get the handbag with it, eBay will side with the buyer and say look this is false advertising you've got to show in the picture exactly what the buyers getting so don't you know don't put extra props in your pictures eBay says right here not to do it um, and I said there were 11 tips in this video the 11th is actually what I said earlier <laughs> um, do your best to take pictures that don't need any editing get it right when you take the picture the size the color so that you don't have to edit either of those things don't have things in the background because adding photo editing to your process is going to take time and if you can cut out the whole editing thing then you're going to save a lot of time so I'm actually going to do a whole video on that coming up soon so tip number 11 is kind of just a teaser to come back and, and see more. <laughs> Um, so I hope that helped you out. Please leave a comment, um, good or bad, if you thought this information was helpful. Again, I will leave the link to eBay's guide below the video. Thank you to all my subscribers for coming back and watching another video. And if you are new here, welcome. Subscribe to my channel for more great videos about how to do eBay the right way. Thanks for watching and have a great day on eBay. Bye.